as a, a terminus, I'm going to hit that tipping point and I'm going to move on in my life because it, this, the expending the energy is not worth it to me. And that is what we're talking about tonight. Because that is exactly why dungeon programming exists. Dungeon programming exists because humanity in the collective is so many different immortals that the simulacrum has to keep, keep, basically keep tabs on all of them, that the best way to do it is to induce herd mentality. Because the simulacrum, as a technological series of protocols, it is technology. It may be a sentient biogram, but it's based on principles of technology. Very, very, very intelligent. Artificial Intelligence X is technology. We can call it God. We can call it the Ark Archon. We can call it Satan, Lucifer, whatever. But it is technology. It's just so far advanced that to us it appears as divinity. But it still must obey the law of conservation of energy. It must. And that's why dungeon programming exists. Because it would take an infinitude of energy to keep up with 7 billion immortals that are all doing their own thing. It has to create reality tunnels. It has to respond to informed fields that are going in all different directions. A multi-layered hologram of, of 10,000 different frequencies of people doing everything, creating all kinds of things. The simulacrum would shut down. It would go into overgrowth. It would, just, it, would just, it would have a meltdown. There's no way it could keep up. But it can keep up today. And the reason it can keep up is because 90% of the entire world fits perfectly within a niche in whatever their culture, society, religion, government, wherever they are in their, in their, in their world, they fit perfectly there and they conform. They do, they do what they are told to do. And yes, they're rewarded by society for it. They don't go to jail because they're, they're law-abiding citizens. The IRS doesn't 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 investigate them because they've been steadily paying their taxes. They they file for they file for building permits when they put up when they put new pro, you know structures on, on on their properties. They do every single thing in line. When the preacher passes has that plate passed around like a good citizen, they take out maybe they, they may not give out ten percent a full tithe, but they give something to the church and the preacher and the preacher gets it and about sixty percent goes into paying the church bills and forty percent goes to the preacher. So everybody's doing their thing. It's all very controlled because once the programming is knit, it doesn't, it doesn't take anything. You have to look at it this way. The simulacrum uses very little energy when people are on autopilot. Because when people are on autopilot, they are controllable. They are controlled. And most importantly, the immortals trapped in the simulacrum are predictable. Once you are predictable, the simulacrum's got you. It can easily fit you into any niche of dungeon programming and fool you into believing that you're free because you had a choice. But if the simulacrum gives you the choice of being a Hindu, it gives you the choice of being uh, uh, a Taoist, gives you a, the choice of being a Southern Baptist, gives you the choice of being a student of the Gnosis, gives you a choice of being a Buddhist, and you take one of those choices, was it really freedom to take something that was provided before you? Couldn't there have been? I mean, Socrates and many other ancient philosophers had a saying, go by unexpected ways or walk by paths unknown. Man, that's a deep philosophical statement. But it's not a popular one because the simulacrum has been trying to edit out that behavior for a very long time. It does not like mavericks. It does not like those it cannot predict. It cannot control. The law of conservation of energy mandates that a control system, a control system can expend the least amount of energy controlling the most amount of independent things if they are all doing the same thing. This is dungeon programming. This is why all these different all these different echelons of society always try to pigeonhole you into being something something that is conformist it doesn't matter what you conform to as long as you assume the behavior of that herd 
those protocols have already been written in the simulacrum waste no energy on that you have basically fallen into a reality tunnel that's already been knit it's already been empowered it's been flowing for a long time therefore the simulacrum has not expended hardly any energy on you on you making that decision and you proving to yourself that you're free when you're not dungeon programming is herd mentality it's going it's going with the flow it's being a lemming and just running with the rest of the pack until you fall off a cliff into the sea. That's dungeon programming. Dungeon programming is waking up every single morning and doing the same things you did the day before. No variety whatsoever. The simulacrum does not fear you if that, if that is your itinerary on a daily basis. The simulacrum doesn't fear anything you know, anything that you share with other people or anything because what you do is a language that this coding reacts to, not what you say. This is what this was the point of my prior video. There is nothing that comes out of a man's mouth that is important or a threat to the simulacrum. Additionally, there is nothing that comes out of a man's mouth that can benefit a man or a woman. And there's nothing the divine, the oversoul will respond to verbally. It won't. All that does is create an informed field. But once an informed field is created, it's like, wait. Now the entire multiverse is, they're watching, all eyes are on you, you just created an informed field. Why is that important? Because the simulacrum knows that within it are co-creators. Every single awakened immortal within the simulacrum that understands its, its co-creation, -crea creative capacity, and understands that it can create, it can create forms out of thought, is a threat, must be herded into, into a, a, it must be corralled into some type of herd. This is why when someone begins to awaken, when someone begins to detach themselves from the mental constructs that are assumed by the herds around them, this is why you go through negative default programming episodes. This is why negative things begin to happen to you, things that are out, out of sync. Uh, not just in the physical world, but even emotionally. This is when you become... Uh, separation anxiety is a lot of people feel the same. I did, I did for a while. You go through the separation anxiety deal and you don't even know what you're separated from. You just feel it. The simulacrum is going to try hard to get you through fear and emotion to get back into the herd. And as soon as you conform, all of a sudden good things start happening for you. As soon as you are not costing it all this extra energy, because it is, it is, it costs the simulacrum a lot to try to knit new reality tunnels to try to predict what your next move is. Because